I recently got an email from someone I'm a big fan of, Dave Ramsey, titled First Time Buyer Mistakes. Having looked through these points, they aren't just mistakes unique to first time home buyers. I see people on their second, third, and fourth home making these same mistakes. So let's talk about the top six mistakes you want to avoid as a home buyer. These are things you won't realize you've done wrong until it's too late. My name is Phil Wells. I'm a real estate agent serving clients in Spokane and throughout North Idaho. If you have any real estate questions, feel free to reach out. Number one is buying too much home. In my view, lenders can approve people for far more than they actually need, and it doesn't do them any favors in the long run. That's not to rag on lenders. They have a particular set of regulations that they operate within and those loan limits are in those regulations. You might feel like you're winning at life when on closing day you roll up into your two car garage, but when it's six months down the line and you feel like all you're doing is working to pay your mortgage, you'll wish you settled for less and had more disposable income. Number two is ignoring resale value. This can happen particularly in a seller's market where you're desperate to get anything under contract. It can be easy to overlook your exit strategy. Are you buying near some new development that's gonna happen in the near future? What about here in Spokane at the North-South Freeway? What's that gonna do to home values in 10 years time? What about school districts? If you don't have kids or your kids are done with school, don't neglect this factor. For a lot of people, school districts are the top priority for them. What about curb appeal? Is the house objectively attractive or did you just buy it because it was a home that you were able to get at the time? Curb appeal really matters, particularly if you're selling in a down market. Number three is assuming you know how much house you can afford without a pre-approval. I've seen too many people do this and honestly, you're not doing yourself any favors by doing this. There are so many nuances when it comes to lending. The amount of time you've been in your job matters. The amount of consumer debt you're carrying matters. The amount of time a gift from a family member has been in one particular account before it can be used is important too. It's honestly a minefield. So do yourself a favor and get that pre-approval before you start house hunting. I've seen too many people shop, for example, in the 600,000 range to discover they only qualify for $450,000 homes. You don't want to be in this situation. You're just in for a world of disappointment because nothing is gonna live up to those $600,000 homes you've been shopping for the last month. Number four is shopping without a real estate agent. Now I understand the appeal for doing this. A lot of people in the industry give the industry a bad reputation. So the temptation to go it alone and find your own home can be appealing. But pursuing this strategy by going to open houses, calling listing agents to look at their properties, or arranging showings on Zillow will lead you to interact with more agents, not less. You'll also miss out on the opportunity to devise a strategy with someone that works in the market every single day and can actually help you out. It also doesn't cost you anything directly to work with a buyer's agent because their fees are paid for by the seller. Buying a home is a very large and potentially complex purchase. If you're a real estate attorney, then go for it. But if you're a software engineer with no experience in real estate, then why would you do this to yourself? Do yourself a favor and find someone that you like who's experienced in the industry, doesn't BS you, and work with them throughout the whole process. Number five is buying mortgage points, especially in this high interest rate environment. With points, you pay part of the interest that you'll pay over the whole life of the loan upfront, but they typically aren't worth it. For a lot of people, they sell or refinance their home before they reach that break even point. This is especially the case in this high mortgage rate environment we're seeing right now, where it's highly probable that people will be refinancing in the next one to two years. Rather than buying points, put more money down by way of a down payment. This will reduce the overall amount of interest you have to pay rather than just paying some interest upfront. Number six is sticking with a bad deal. Once you're under contract, you've probably spent about $1,000 on inspections and maybe you've also paid for your appraisal. So the temptation is just to stick with the deal, even if it's a bad one and close on the transaction. And I get this, buying a home, you get really emotionally invested into the home that you're gonna be buying. But closing on a bad deal is a terrible idea. What if the seller has refused to pay for or replace a leaky roof? Are you gonna close on that property and pay for that roof just because you've spent $1,000? Be prepared to lose some money along the way. Obviously that's not the plan, but being prepared to walk away from a deal is the most powerful tool in any negotiation and might also give you the leverage to turn that bad deal into a good one. That's it for this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions about real estate, please feel free to reach out. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, and I'd be honored to work with you. Thanks for watching.